Good morning. Welcome to today's devotion. Today we're going to open our Bibles in Hebrews chapter 5. And we're going to read from verse 5 to verse 8. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement, vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And just building on what we were talking about during our previous devotional, the fact that Christ is our great high priest, and as our great high priest, he is representing us at the right hand of the Father. He's interceding for us. And he's not just interceding for us, but the word of God tells us that he also sympathizes with us in our weaknesses. He sympathizes. He feels our pain. He feels what we're going through. He's able to have compassion upon us. Why? Because he went through it himself. And I think that's one of the most difficult things to, to grasp, isn't it? Sometimes we think, you know, can he really understand what I'm going through? Does he really know what it is to, to suffer temptation like I do? Well, let me tell you that he does. He does. And that's what the writer to the Hebrews says here. Actually, it was God, the Father, who exalted him, glorified him to be the high priest, to be the representative. All of this was initiated by God. It was God who took the first steps. It was God who sent his son into the world to, to die for our sins and also to be raised to life so that we might have life. It is God that has exalted him to, to the right hand of the majesty and glory. It is God that has made him the high priest, the great high priest. And so it was also necessary for the son of God to experience humanity, to experience what it, what it means to go through battles, trials, tribulations, through temptation. And it comes out here wonderfully. He says, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And that's a complicated verse to grasp, isn't it? But what it's not saying, it's not saying that he was disobedient and then he had to become obedient through suffering. That's not what he's saying. But he's saying that his obedience had to be demonstrated. You know, in order for it to be real, in order for him to, to be a, our high priest, our great representative, he needed to demonstrate that obedience through suffering. It cost him something so that we might have the, the chance, the opportunity to overcome, that he can give us what we need. And so he became obedient by the things which he suffered. For example, when he went out into the desert, before he went into his public ministry, the Holy Spirit led him into the, desert, the, the wilderness of Judea to face Satan. And he was directly challenged by Satan. That voice of seduction, the, the, the seductive voice of the adversary. And for 40 days and nights, he, you know, he was fasting and he, he came to his weakest point. And Satan was, was attacking and Satan was tempting. And uh, he overcame that for us, but it cost him something. He had to feel what it was. He had to feel the pressure of temptation. He had to feel the, the weakness of humanity. Yet he overcame. And then I think about when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was about just contemplating everything he was about to face at the cross. All of the, the pain, the physical pain the emotional and psychological pain that he would have to go through, everything that he was facing. And, and there's a point where, where he cries out, you know, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. Again, isn't that exactly what the writer was saying here? Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And so what I'm trying to say this morning, friends, is that when we come to him, and when the Bible says he's able to sympathize with us, I want to tell you that he's qualified as our high priest. He knows what it is to go through suffering 
and pain. He knows what it is to, to face trial and tribulation, rejection, to face injustice. He knows what it is to face temptation, to hear the voice of Satan, that seductive voice of Satan. And yet he overcame. He overcame. He was victorious. And therefore, he's able to give you and I what we need so that we can overcome and be victorious. So can he sympathize with you today? Absolutely he can. But more than that, he can give you what you need to overcome this battle. May God bless you. Have a wonderful day.